you know, the Atlanta Hawks are and probably will always be underrated. And why I say this is because sports talking heads, you know, sports casts or just analysts in general always tend to discredit them. Now, we know that the Atlanta Hawks made the Eastern Conference Finals last year, and that was a shock to the whole world. But people have been going out on a limb to say that they are a fluke and they will not make it anywhere near that spot this year. Charles Barkley, after the Hawks won by almost 30 points, went out on a limb and said that the Hawks were a fluke. Now, after you beat the best young player in the league, which is Luka Doncic, and hold him to 18 points on terrible efficiency, why would you call them a fluke? After having a great performance, that is not the time or context to be calling them a fluke. So today, I will get into why they can make the Eastern Conference Finals again, and why they are still one of the best teams in the East, but people will just still discredit them. Alright, so first, let's get into why people discredit the Atlanta Hawks. Now, last year, we all know everybody basically got discredited that wasn't Giannis and the Bucks because they love Giannis. You know what I mean? Giannis is the golden boy of the NBA, so they didn't talk shit on him, but they'll talk shit on everybody else. And that's just the reality that we were in. So the Suns, they've been getting called flukes because, you know, they lost to the Nuggets on opening night. The Lakers also being called a fluke as in like Russell Westbrook is not going to work. All these great teams are getting called flukes because of an injury riddled season last year and I don't understand why the blame is put on the Atlanta Hawks. They cannot control those injuries. But nonetheless, people act like the Hawks are not competitive. Charles Barkley said the Knicks got better. He said that the Sixers are healthier. When in reality, the Sixers were pretty damn healthy that, that playoff series. And even though, yes, Joel Embiid was recovering from an injury, he was still playing at an all-time great level for his center in the playoffs. And he was averaging like 28 points, shooting like 40% from three in the playoffs. I didn't see a problem with Joel Embiid. Nonetheless, though, why the Hawks will always be underrated is because Trey Young is hated. Trey Young is one of the most hated players in the league because of his ability to draw fouls and get to the free throw line. We see the same thing with James Harden. Those are two great playmaking guards that shoot a lot of free throws. And the media has a problem with it because they don't like seeing free throws and they don't like seeing flopping and shit. But in reality, it's a tactic and it's very useful at that. Trey Young and James Harden are some of the more efficient guard scorers over the past couple years. And part of that is because they can draw fouls. So that's why they will always be underrated is because Trey Young is hated. So now, let's get into my philosophy of why I think the Hawks can make the Eastern Conference Finals, because that sounds like a bold-ass take. And as a Heat fan, I don't want the Hawks to beat us, but I think they can. Like, their depth, three-point shooting, and paint protection is so great, I feel like it can upset multiple teams, like how they did the 76ers last season. So first, I want to talk about John Collins. John Collins is a great scorer for his position and one of the best players in his position, but is very underlooked because he doesn't average 20 points per game like he used to. The reason why he doesn't average 20 points per game is because Clint Capella is there, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Kevin Herter. There is so much depth now than there was when he was scoring 20 points per game. So why are people overreacting to that? I don't know. But let's just look at his efficiency real quick. John Collins is one of the most underrated mid-range shooters in the NBA. He shot 55% from 10 to 16 feet last year, and he shot 47% from 16 feet to three point. And in the playoffs, he didn't slow down. He shot 52% from 10 to 16, and 57% from 16 feet to three point. Like that is ridiculous. A 60%, almost a 60% shot is a mid range shot. That is great efficiency. And it doesn't outweigh a three pointer because the three pointer is so overpowered these days but that is great efficiency. 65% true shooting percentage in the regular season and 62% true shooting percentage in the playoffs. John Collins didn't slow down and that's why the Hawks are underrated because in their one playoff run that they did have, they didn't have any playoff droppers. I say the only playoff dropper is Bogdan Bogdanovich because he did slow down a lot on efficiency, but everybody else rose. You know, Trey Young got a lot better. His playmaking was elite and even though his efficiency didn't really reflect it, I mean, Trey Young is known for playmaking more than he is for scoring, so eat my dick. Clint Capella, obviously one of the better lob threats in the league, and it's not he's not a good lob threat because he's a good lob catcher, really, or a good roamer, but he's a good lob threat because he has had Trey Young and James Harden pass to him, and those are some of the best lob passers in the current era. And also, let's talk about DeAndre Hunter, okay? DeAndre Hunter last night had 11 points, 5 for 11 from the field. That's solid, you know what I mean? But the biggest thing I want to touch on is his defense. He held Luka Doncic to 18 points on 6 for 17 shooting, 2 for 7 from 3. That is something that Luka doesn't do. Luka is one of the best floor raisers in the league, 
and he doesn't have those ugly games. But DeAndre Hunter was a big problem with that. And also, of course, let's not look past Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish last night, 20 points, 7 of 15 from the field. He had 20 points in the East Conference Finals too. Cam Reddish is improving a lot, and he shows prowess on defense, and he shows a lot of great shot creating ability. Cam Reddish is like a, like a homeless Paul George. Not a homeless Paul George, but he's like a great value Paul George in the respect that he can play defense and he can shot create for himself. But I actually want to specifically more speak on DeAndre Hunter. Last year, he didn't shoot well from three. 33% from three, that's not good, but 48% from the field and 15 points per game. DeAndre Hunter is actually like statistically not that good of a three-point shooter. I mean, for his career, he shoots 35% from three, but I think he has a jump shot that can do it. Because if you look in the playoffs, he shot 38% from three, which is a big improvement. And yeah, only 3.2 attempts a game, but that's his role. He's a role player. So the biggest thing I want to say is that DeAndre Hunter has like popped off. You know, Cam Reddish was to be seen as a small forward for the future for this team. And DeAndre Hunter really took that role because of his great defense and his shot making ability. All right. But like I said, the reason why I think the Hawks can be so good is because of playoff risers. Obviously, Trey Young got better in the playoffs. I mean, 42% from the field and 31% from three is not pretty. But if you just look back at game seven, which was probably his worst shooting performance of the playoffs, his playmaking was so elite and game changing in that game that he was no doubt a positive. So when your star player is obviously showing up to play like he did against the Knicks, he completely torched the Knicks and he did against the 76ers, then you're good. Trey Young also dropped 48 points against the Bucks. Like, Trey Young was great that playoffs. And nonetheless, the biggest thing I want to take away from this is a three-point shooting. DeAndre Hunter, 38%. Danilo Gallinari, 40%. Cam Reddish, 64% from three. And Lou Williams, 43% from three in the playoffs. And everybody on this Hawks roster was underrated. I say the only overrated guy on the roster is Lou Williams because he's known as an all-time great, you know, bench performer. But other than that, they're a very underrated team. And I would not count them out. And this year, I have them finishing as a top three or four seed. I think that in the regular season, they can be so good to where they have home court advantage through the first two rounds in the playoffs. And I think that can happen. But anyway, if y'all like the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, do all that. And yeah, peace out. Hey, come on, I got a bag on me. You try to take it, leave you stankin' like your last homie. She kinda cakey, little baby, put that ass on me. But I ain't that horny, do you got some cash for me? Why every time you ask him that, bitch is act funny. And you keep trying to hold the strap, you won't slap for me. You too happy, I can tell you never had money. Every time you get on live, got a flash money.